Hello ACCA financial management students. My name is Steve. Today we're here looking at inventory and working capital management. We will be exploring these topics and the spreadsheet exam technique that you need to tackle these topics. Today looking at question Dusty from September, December 2019. So please Check out that question in the practice platform, try it at home, then continue watching this video and we'll compare our work. Alrighty, let us get started. We are in the computer-based exam environment. We're looking at the question Dusty. First thing I like to do, have a look at the verbs. I'm very happy that I see calculate, calculate, calculate. So they've given me a spreadsheet for that. Nice of them. And what are we calculating? I see holding and ordering costs EOQ. So we are looking at a standard working capital management inventory type question. My students usually find these on the easier side of things. So if you get a question like this, consider yourself lucky. Let's check out the number of marks now. That's going to give us an indication of how much work we need to do. And we see a total there of 10 marks. One mark for part A, four and four, and then a final one mark. So we know time management, 1.7 minutes per mark. That means we have 17 minutes to do this challenge, to complete this challenge. And let's now move this slider this way. Click on the highlighter tool, which you will see in the real exam, and you go through here highlighting all the important pieces of inventory. We see the annual demand. We see the purchase price of one component. We see 12 orders per year. So you're going to need to take several minutes to read, to find all of that important information, and to draft a plan. We've read, we've highlighted, we're ready to get started. So now we can enlarge the spreadsheet area so we can get to work. We are in the spreadsheet tool now. Let's get started. Let's make a quick work of part one. It's only one mark, so you know that means it's probably a straightforward task to complete. Let's label what we do so the marker can follow along and give us the marks in an easy way. Question is asking for annual holding costs and ordering costs, so let's give the marker exactly what they're looking for. We can double click on a column separator to auto en enlarge it to the to the width of the of the of the widest item in that column. We're going to need a total later, so let's just do that now. Annual holding costs. I'm going to make an extra column here just for our demonstration purposes. You won't need this in the exam. These are just some notes, okay? Uh, if you remember the annual holding cost, okay, that is going to be quantity divided by two plus buffer, if the question includes buffer, okay, multiplied by the cost of holding one unit in inventory for one year. Okay, and we would put brackets around those. Okay, so that is the formula that we need to calculate, everybody. Let me quickly review what's going on there with the two because that often causes trouble. If we look at this graph, we're plotting time and quantity. When the delivery truck drops off a full load of <coughs> units, okay, that will be the maximum amount and in simple in a simple environment and we can assume then that depletion happens at a constant rate. The truck comes and magically replenishes at the same point. Okay, so we're looking for the average inventory level which would be half of that, okay? That is why we divide by two. So imagine if the quantity was 100, then half of that would be 50. So half the time we're above, half the time we're below. That is why we divide by 2. 
The formula for annual ordering costs, as you remember, is the annual demand divided by the order quantity. That tells us how many orders we place per year multiplied by the cost of placing one order. Okay, so th those are the formulas. And now if we go into the question, we can make quite quick work of this, can't we? And we see that the company is ordering 1,500,000 units a year, okay? And they are ordering 12 times a year. So right there, that is the order quantity. We need to divide that number by two, everybody. Okay, there's no buffer in this question. And so now let's add another parentheses and multiply by the cost of holding one unit in inventory for one year, which is given to us at 21 cents. Annual ordering costs, even easier. We know we're placing 12 units a year multiplied by the cost of placing one order, 252. There we go. The total will be equal to the sum of those two figures of that this range of cells from C2 to C3. And guys, we are done making quick work of this question. There are no marks for formatting, but it's starting to look a little bit cluttered. So I'm going to give a little bit of tactical formatting here so it's easier on my eyes. And why not help the marker as well follow along? And we can underline this part with a control U. Okay, to show that the line below is the total. Let's move to part two, which is four marks. So we know that there are going to be more things to do here in part two. Um, Part two, we are looking at the financial effect of adopting EOQ, and there are two factors there. We're going to look at the, the impact on inventory management costs, which is the easy part, which is the assumed knowledge from, from MA, and then we're going to look at the financing impact. Okay, We're going to look at the, the change in finance costs. So let's take this step by step. Let's tell the marker what we are doing, and of course, the first thing we need to do is calculate the EOQ. And they give you the formula for EOQ, but I remember it because it's fish and chips, favorite food of British people. So I've heard. Okay, so fish and chips, what is that? That's two multiplied by CO, cost of placing one order, multiplied by demand, that's two cod over holding costs, CH, all of that in brackets. And we need to finally end with the square root of that figure. So then we will put it to the power of 0 0.5. That's an easy way to do that in Excel. OK, so we have all of that information right there. So that will be equal to 2 multiplied by 252 multiplied by 1 million. 500,000, a lot of zeros. Be careful there with those zeros. Okay, all of that in brackets. Divided by CH, which is 0 0.21. There's that 21 cents. All of that again in more brackets. And to the power of 0 0.5. Guys, that's how we do EOQ in the spreadsheet. Let me remind you, column D, there are no marks for this. This is just for demonstration purposes, right? Guys, let me reiterate, column D is just for our demonstration purposes. There are no marks there. In fact, let me change the color just so we know that. Let us now get the savings in inventory management costs. So all we need to do is get the new annual ordering costs and we need to get the new annual holding costs okay we'll get a total there okay and then the savings in inventory management
will be equal to the old total minus the new total. So new total, guys, that will be, let's use the same formula, the order quantity divided by 2, that is 60, that is 60,000 divided by 2 multiplied by 21 cents. If you remember this cool trick, at EOQ, the annual ordering costs are the same as the annual holding costs. So we can just set cell C9 equal to C8 and save a lot of time. We can total those up by quickly grabbing the same total here. We are using the power of relative cell addressing. If I grab that total formula and park it over here, we get the same. It will hold the relative position of those cells. Let's put an underline here. Let's open up our column a bit more. And now the savings and in inventory management will be equal to the first total minus the second total, everybody. There we have it. Quick work of the first step. Moving on to the savings and financing costs, we're going to go through several steps. First thing that we need is the current average inventory, okay? Then we can get the new average inventory under EOQ. Once we get that, we can get the change in inventory, right? Or the reduction in units. Now the impact of this, let's uh, recall that we have an overdraft, okay? It specifically says in this question that we have an overdraft of $500,000. So inventory, we can assume, is funded by that overdraft. So if we reduce our inventory, okay, we are recovering cash. We will be reducing our overdraft. So we need to then, we know the reduction in units, we can then get the reduction in the overdraft. And the overdraft, we know that the price per unit that we pay to our suppliers is $14. And the interest that we pay is 3%. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do to get the reduction in the overdraft. So the current inven average inventory, we did that upstairs, we said that that was, we purchase 1,500,000 per year and we place our orders 12 times a year. So once again, that's easier than copy pasting for me at this point, that's gonna be equal to 1,500,000 divided by 12 orders divided by two to get the average figure. The new average, guys, will simply be the EOQ divided by 2. So let's just go to EOQ and divide that by 2. So the reduction in units, everybody, will be equal to C14 minus C15. And the final step, we can now multiply that by 14 and then by 0 0.03. We can now quickly finish this up. The total savings will be equal to savings in inventory management plus the savings in finance costs. There we have it. Quick work, everybody. That is part A2 of question, Dusty. Let us move to part three. Should we accept the offer to change our order quantity to 250,000? The first step is to compare the inventory management costs. Second step, let's see what happens to our financing costs if the inventory level changes, the overdraft will change. 
and that means the interest will change, our interest payments will change. And the third thing is that all of this will be offset by the discount that we get, the 0.5% discount. So let's take this in three steps. First thing we can do is the inventory management costs. And look at this, we're going to save a lot of time if we use work we already did and we copy paste. So look at this. I can grab this part here. Let me copy paste it twice. Once, twice. Let me rename some of these things, okay? This will be the current inventory management costs. And we can come down here and rename this one. Inventory management costs at the 250,000. So I just need to come into these formulae and fix the figure. So we just have to change out that Q to 250,000. There we go, 250,000. And we have to change the quantity here again. So the new number of orders will be our annual demand divided by the order quantity. That's how many times the truck will come to our factory. And we have a new inventory management cost. So the increase So the increase in inventory management costs will be the difference between those two figures. Okay, that will be equal to the bigger one minus the smaller one in C23. Let's continue. Before we do that, I will make this bold as I need to grab this a bit later. So I'm gonna bold this out with a control B. And let me come downstairs here. And next step, everybody, is the increase in the financing costs. So we simply need the current financing costs. Financing costs at 250,000. And the change. So the current financing costs will be equal to our current average inventory level, which we have right up here. Okay, multiplied by $14 per unit at the interest rate of 3%. That's the overdraft interest rate. Now, the new financing costs, guys, this is going to be a bigger equation. This will be equal to 250,000 units divided by 2. That gets me the average level. Multiplied by $14. Multiplied by 99.5% to represent the discount. We get a 5% discount, so it becomes cheaper. Multiplied by 0 0.995. Multiplied by the interest rate, 0 0.03. And the difference, everybody, will be equal to the bigger one less the smaller one. Let's bold that because we'll need it again in a moment just so we can pick it easier from our list. So we have two big increase increases in cost if we do the deal. Okay, so let's come down here now, and the only reason we would consider this is the discount that we receive, right? That would be the discount on purchases. Okay, and that will be equal to the 1,500,000 units that we buy every year 
multiplied by $14 a unit multiplied by half a percent, 0 0.005. And an equal sign in front of that would help. 105. Now let's make this bold. And because this one is a benefit, the others are costs, let's put this negative. Okay. Now we can look at the net effect. Okay. Net financial impact. Okay, and that will be equal to the sum of all of the bold ones. That will be equal to the discount that we get plus the change in finance costs plus the increase in management costs. Look at that. We have a savings, everybody. It's lower. That's a reduction in cost. Let's just put a little happy face there so we make sure we understand that. And let me clean this up a tiny bit here. That's the change in finance costs. Guys, I just want to reiterate, there are no marks for formatting, for labeling. So as long as the marker understands what you're doing, you will get the credit. But let's make it easier for them. Let's just make it super clear for the user of the spreadsheet what you're doing. And we see a net benefit. Let's move now to the final part of this question. Make that bold, easier to stand out, and we can come here and do part four. Part four is the easiest mark in the whole question, everybody. And we get the easiest mark in this question for interpreting in one sentence what that negative 67 means, okay? We should We should accept the offer as it results in a net 67.4 thousand in savings. Guys, well done if you made it this far. Congratulations. We had 17 minutes to do all of that. Remember the own figure rule. If you had made numerical errors upstairs and you had a positive number here and you said it would be more expensive, you would get that mark for correct interpretation, interpretation even if the figure was not correct. Guys, there you have it. Inventory, working capital management, paper financial management. Look at our nice, neat, easy to read answer. Good luck on your upcoming exam, everybody. Goodbye for now.